Welcome to Spiritual Way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, wasting time has become a difficulty. How to deal with it? We find ourselves without much time. We're always busy. We always have something. We don't have the time for the right things. Well, the distractions are so many. So if you want to deal with the difficulty, you need to look at the cause and you need to see why it has happened. Why did the difficulty come about? Here, we're talking of time management. People who don't have time because they're wasting it. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, tells us, نِعْمَتَانِ مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ There are two gifts of Allah that many people take for granted. The first one is your health. So when you lose your health, you realize, oh, I should have done this and should have done that when I was healthy. The second one is your free time, your spare time, or your time in general. Al-Faragh. Al-Faragh refers to the free time. But your time where when you're occupied truly, then you realize, oh gosh, when I was free, I should have done this and should have done that. So Allah Almighty draws our attention to those two gifts. So free time is a gift of Allah. Are you just going to spend it on the distractions of this world or do something meaningful? Number one, to deal with this difficulty, don't compromise your five daily prayers. You'll find Allah will help you manage the time. I'm going to give you a few tips. The first one is your five daily prayers. If you get up in the morning and you really make sure you wash yourself and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salatul fajr, Allah will bless your day with lots of baraka. Baraka means blessings. So they're unique blessings. One of them is time management. You have Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib and Isha. You know the prayers, right? Through the day. You pray those prayers and you make sure that you enjoy them. Even if it is only the bare minimum, the fact that you've done that, Allah will bless your day with regards to many things. One of them is time management. Similarly, start your day with a portion of recitation of the Quran. That's tip number two. So if you've read a portion of the Quran, even if it is two minutes, again, the Quran is a unique gift of Allah, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you think you don't have time to read the Quran, let me tell you one of the miracles of the Quran that you may not have realized is that when you sit to read the Quran, it makes the time for you in a miraculous way. Try it out. It's amazing. That means if you think you don't have the time and you stop whatever you're doing and you spend a moment with the Quran, you will have the time. You won't realize that, you know what? Wow, I thought I didn't have the time. Where did this time come from? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives blessings. Allah is the one. You spent time with Allah. Allah says, we won't let you down. You can never have wasted a time that you've spent with Allah. In prayer, the five daily prayers, the recitation of the Quran. So those two things will help you manage your time. The problem with us is the distractions of today are many. The biggest of these distractions is social media. Unfortunately, we've talked about it quite a bit, but that's because it dominates our lives. Let's face it. So with us on our phones and our devices, we actually lose track of time to the degree that an hour passes, two hours pass, and we're still there. And people come and go, and we're still there. And people come back and go back, and we're still there. And what happened to your prayer? You lost track of it. That's why you don't have the time management. Put an alarm on your phone. Let it cut off and switch off. Switch the phone off, switch on your connection with Allah. But if you switch on your phone, do not disconnect with Allah. The Quran, you do something good on your phone. And the third tip is the remembrance of Allah. Keep your tongue moistened with the remembrance of Allah. What is the remembrance of Allah? Well, it's a very broad words, meaning these are very broad words, a broad sentence. Dhikrullahi, the remembrance of Allah. Any good word is the remembrance of Allah. The five daily prayers are a remembrance of Allah. Recitation of the Quran is the remembrance of Allah. But generally when we say dhikr and we've already spoken about those two things, then it's referring to words of praise of Allah. Subhanallah, praise be to Allah. Alhamdulillah, 
Praise be to Allah. La ilaha illallah, none worthy of worship besides Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Uh, and so on. Glory be to Allah, praise be to Allah. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And there is no might besides that of Allah. Uh, and no power besides that of Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. al Ali al azim Allah is the greatest. So when you moisten your tongue, even subhanallah, 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 and you repeat these words, these words are blessed. Allah blesses you with so much that what you see, what you do, what you say, everything is actually transformed into a beautiful, beautiful act of worship. Subhanallah. You become conscious of so many other things and automatically Allah will help you stay away from that which is displeasing to him. Imagine a person who conscious about their prayer, started the morning with the Quran, remembers Allah. Do you really think that they're going to fall straight into major sin? I'd like to think if they were genuine about all of this, then this would not actually happen because Allah will not allow the two to come together in the heart of a true believer. Something which is stark contrast. Allah blesses you with time management. You're able to manage your time. The daily prayers, the recitation of the Quran, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not wasting your time with the distractions. Identify the distractions. Some people sit late at night and they don't realize their friends or whatever they're busy with sitting late at night, even games. People play games. And the addiction to games, as far as a few studies that I've read, is similar to the addiction to pornography. You can read it. I've read so much, I'm convinced by it. And I do believe that that requires help. You need someone who's an expert at dealing with behavioral addictions to help you come out of it. Because to be honest with you, people are addicted to games in, in an even bigger way then they would be addicted to pornography because they see nothing wrong with it. Yes, the one might be outside the values and morals of a believer. This one here, you might argue, is in the values and morals. But the fact that you're addicted is what would actually make you a cabbage. It would make you a cabbage because you lose everyone and everything around you over time and you blame them for it. You don't know you're an addict. That's what it is. You need help. You must reach out for help. So gaming has become a problem. You lose track of time. Today we're talking about time management. You set aside a time. I'm going to play a game if I really have to, alhamdulillah. If it's not haram like the other stuff, I, but it needs to be within a limit. I need to go to bed early in order to get up early in order to have a blessed day ahead. But no, you're up all night. And what you're going to do all day? Sleepy, you're going to be upset, you're going to be emotional, you're going to get cross, you're going to start yelling and shouting at the people who you live with, you're going to be on edge all the time, be it children, be it spouse, be it parents, whoever it may be, be it those you work with or work for and so on, or those who work for you, and you're not a nice person because your time management. Similarly, your health is affected because of the time and so many other things that you would not realize are actually damaged because you haven't managed your time. So Allah tells you, be disciplined, fulfill your prayers, do whatever you have to, sleep on time. That's another tip. Sleep on time. Push yourself to sleep on time. Initially, it won't be easy. You'll toss and turn because you're not used to going to bed early. Go to bed early. It's a sunnah and a sunnah will bring about so much of goodness. You'll get up early as well. But push yourself to go to bed early, come what may and see how Allah blesses you. So these are some of the ways of dealing with this difficulty of time management. May Allah Almighty grant us blessed days in His obedience. When we have fun, let it be limited to a specific time that is not going to come in the way of us and the duties and obligations we have. And may Allah Almighty grant us all goodness.